At 3.30 p.m. on the first day of September, things really start to get interesting. It's the Pac-12. It's the almighty SEC. A clash between two powerhouse teams from their respective conferences held at a neutral site with- Uh, the game's actually in Atlanta. Atlanta? Yeah, Atlanta. Like the two-hour drive up 85 for the Auburn Tigers, Atlanta, or... Atlanta, Georgia. Wow. Doesn't the SEC get enough help with location during bowl season? I'm stoked about this game, and I hate to go directly to the quarterbacks on both sides, but come on. It's college football. Who you have under center is everything. This game features two absolute upperclassmen studs who have been wonderful distributing the pigskin. Jarrett Stidham last year went 246 for 370 for 3,158 yards, 18 touchdowns, and 6 interceptions. A 3-to-1 touchdown-to-interception ratio is not too shabby. He also got the W against the eventual national champions, Alabama. Jake Browning went 230 for 336 for 2,719 yards, 19 touchdowns, and 5 interceptions. But definitely saw his share of difficulties during the second half of the season. This game starts there, and really I trust both quarterbacks, but if I had to choose one, I think I like Stidham's upside more. Coaching is also extremely important in neck and neck games like these, so let's go ahead and compare the two. 2013 was Malzahn's first season at Auburn. He went 12-2 and came dang close to beating Florida State in the natty. In fact, Auburn had to crumble late to lose by three to a team led by a Crab Lake Thief. Let's go. Let's go. That's a W. That's E1. That's E1. That's a W. How many people want to eat a W tonight? Yeah. Yeah. How many eat a W tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Boy, I, come in. That's man, all I want. In 2014, he had a setback at 8-5. In 2015, he went 7-6. And, and in 2016, he went 8-5 again. Wait. How did he not lose his job in modern day football with those records? And of course, last year he went 10 and four and lost to UCF in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, also held in Atlanta. By all accounts, it would appear that Malzahn only did exceptionally well once he took over Gene Chizik's Tigers. But that's just an opinion. A good opinion, but an opinion nonetheless. Chris Peterson's time at Washington began in 2014, where since then he's gone eight and six, seven and six, 12 and two, and 10 and three with one playoff appearance in the mix at a school with much less recruiting prowess and prestige. Advantage Washington in the coaching category, especially when you mix in Peterson's track record prior to his arrival in Seattle. Looking at the defenses, Washington had the eighth best statistically last year. Auburn had the 14th best. However, Washington lost big defensive tackle Vita Vea, who was picked 12th in this year's draft. They also lost linebackers Azeem Victor and Keyshawn Bieria, both in the sixth round. Auburn lost a great one in Carlton Davis, but that's it. Replacing Vea is going to be difficult, especially after losing Kevin King, Buda Baker, and Sidney Jones the year before. However, there really isn't anything that would suggest that the Huskies will drop in defensive consistency this year, given the way that they didn't do so last year with those departures. Edge goes to Washington. Side note, Washington lost playmaker Dante Pettis at wide receiver and returner, but Auburn lost running back Kerryon Johnson. Go Lions! Lastly, for special teams, kicker Daniel Carlson went pro for Auburn. Last season, he went 23 for 31, which statistically was his worst in his four years there. For Washington, I mentioned the loss of Dante Pettis, which is huge, no doubt. They also lost their kicker, Tristan Viscano, and Van Soderberg will fill in. To put that into perspective, Soderberg replaced Viscano one time last year against Arizona State. He ended up going 0 for 2, missing from point blank range at 21 yards and 27 yards in a miserable and ugly 13 to 7 loss. But he does have a 3.9 GPA, so maybe he'll figure things out? Nonetheless, I think I have to go with Auburn here because what is unknown at kicker for them doesn't strike me as much as what is known at kicker for Washington. So in the categories that mean the most to me in this game, we're all knotted up at 2-2 two and, two and I need something that beats the tie. Hmm. I think I'll revisit proximity here. This is essentially a home game for Auburn while Washington is in a completely different time zone. I'll take a two hour bus ride with 80% of the fans in the stands over an eight hour flight with a layover in 20%. Hey, Huskies AD, why did you agree to that? Let's go 26 to 24 Auburn in a tight one. Even as a Michigan fan, I think this is the true game of the week to start the season. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this preview and if you live and breathe college football the way I do, go ahead and subscribe below. Let's talk and debate this season. Maturely, I'm talking to you Notre Dame fans. I enjoyed having you here. I'm Lego on Fuego and I'll see you next time. That's uh, that's not gonna get me any subscribers, is it?